Okay, so warm welcome to this session today on LinkedIn for financial advisors. We t I tend to do this one periodically. Uh, it's a course that I run. Normally, I do like a full day a deep dive onto LinkedIn, but it's quite notable from our Facebook groups. And for those of you that um, we've not met before, I'm the guy behind the Life Talk groups um, on Facebook. Just letting in a few more people here. Uh, we've got three groups on Facebook and we have a largest group on LinkedIn as well. Still more people joining. Let's get them all in. Okay, fantastic. Um, and from time to time, uh, the questions around lead generation come up. Financial advisors saying, what do people think about uh, unbiased? What do people think about uh, any kind of any form of lead generation? And some people ask about LinkedIn. And it's interesting, the response to that. Uh, most financial advisors kind of are not quite sure about LinkedIn. So uh, every now and again, it's a good idea to to put something on where we take uh, a reasonably deep dive into what's, go what's going on on the site. Because LinkedIn does develop, it does change. Uh, and from time to time, there are, there are new developments. Now, some of you will have seen me do a talk on LinkedIn before. Uh, time has passed, so we need to update it. There are some new features on LinkedIn we need to go into. And what I'm not going to do too much today is go into the sort of background of uh, how LinkedIn came to be, other than the fact that LinkedIn is 20 years old this week. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. As I said, it's part of a, a full day uh, training that I do on LinkedIn. And um, let's dive in what i'd like to get to is the point where certainly by the end of the end of today or after the, the, you're looking at linkedin in a, in a kind of new light and you see it from a, a slightly different perspective uh, where you get to the point where you realize actually this thing's quite good um and we really need you to be treating it as an asset of your business just as your uh, computer systems are assets of your business, the hardware that you use in the business, uh, maybe your office building, if you have one, it's an asset of your business. Uh, your website is very much an asset of your business. And we want to get to the point where you don't just look at LinkedIn as just another social tool that someone said I ought to be giving it a go. And when I have given it a go, it hasn't really done much for me. Um, so I want to get past to the point where give that a go really isn't an option anymore and that we start treating this site really quite seriously. And, and if we don't treat it seriously as financial advice professionals, trust me, the rest of the world treats LinkedIn very, very seriously. LinkedIn, admittedly, is a, it's a business that sort of plows along very, very quietly in the background. It doesn't make too much noise. I remember after the Cambridge Analytica issue on on um, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn were very, very quiet about sort of how data is used there, but they very quietly and very professionally did a complete review of the whole business and looked at privacy and so on and so forth. Um, but quietly, LinkedIn in the background is growing very, very strong year on year. And huge numbers of businesses around the world are using it on a daily basis, if not on an hourly basis. And it does, of course, depend on your role in your own business as to how you might use it. LinkedIn, of course, is owned by Microsoft. Um, and their strategy really is to make LinkedIn an indispensable business tool that anybody can use. Yes, people are still joining us. An indispensable business tool that you can use. So there's got to be something to it. Uh, so let's take take a look, and I'm going to show you a few things which you might not have seen before when it comes to LinkedIn. First of all, very, very briefly, what we're going to cover today, we are going to look at what is LinkedIn. Um, some financial advisors are absolutely crushing it on LinkedIn. They realize we really should be putting a lot of effort in, so they do put some effort in. They've taken the trouble to learn how to use it, because I've said this before, at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a piece of software. And like any software that you use in your business, unless you have been trained on how to use it, you will never see the real benefits that uh, that it has to offer. So some financial advisors are really crushing it on LinkedIn. I'm going to show you what they're doing, um, which I think might be quite useful. I'm going to show you the single most valuable feature on LinkedIn, which the vast majority of financial advisors are not even using. Some know it's there, but even though they know it's there, they're not actually using it. Then I show you 25 different ways to post content. Now, one of the issues about social media is there is tends to be this sort of pressure 
that we really need to be sharing everything about every aspect of our lives 24-7 on every social media platform. And I get it that not everybody wants to do that. Um, and so I'm going to show you some different ways that you can start using LinkedIn to post content. Posting content is not compulsory on LinkedIn, but if you get it right and you do it in a certain way, then it has some quite remarkable um, effects. Um, I'm going to talk about communication. I did in the promotion, I'm going to show you a couple of scripts that I use um, that just work. Um, and there's some copywriting psychology behind them as well as to why they work as well but if you want to do cold reach out to use uh, an american expression uh, here's a way that you can do it comfortably um, which certainly for me works almost every single time um, a lot of people ask me about automation what sort of automation tools do i use um, the message i'm going to give you on automation is do not use it except for one particular tool. And I'm going to show you that one particular tool and I'll show you how I use it. Um, and it's very effective indeed. So what is LinkedIn? Well, it's kind of anything you want it to be. Uh, as I said, link, uh, um, Microsoft's strategy with LinkedIn is to make it an indispensable business tool so that you don't need to do too much surfing around the web to find a tool that will help you. I think for most people, um, particularly uh, self-employed people or people who have to sell something, whether that's a product or whether that's a service, they will tend to see it as a tool that, that you can use. And I know a lot of people look at LinkedIn and they say it looks awfully like Facebook these days. Um, and in some respects, that's that's quite a good thing. Uh, which will become apparent as we go. But basically, it's anything you want it to be. But underlying it all is the fact that LinkedIn is a search engine. LinkedIn is the people and expertise search engine. And right now, literally right now, there are people on LinkedIn searching for expertise that each and every one of you have. Some of you will be coming up and showing quite highly in their search results the majority of you will not be. And I'll explain why that's happening as we go. So it's really important to remember that in addition to appearing in Google and in Bing, you really also need to appear high in LinkedIn search results as well. And here's a quite interesting thing is that if you position your profile correctly on LinkedIn, uh, your LinkedIn profile will also appear very high in Google search results as well. So you kind of get a double hit for it as well. Also, some of the content that you post on LinkedIn gets picked up by search engines as well. So the thing is powerful. But what's important to remember is that, um, and I'll come on to that in just a second. One of, one of the issues about it being a search engine is that because there's best part of 900 million people on LinkedIn, we want to make sure that you and your expertise appears when people are actually searching for you. So it's all very well saying it's a powerful search engine. What we want to make sure is that you actually do appear high in people's search results. And by that, I mean on page one of LinkedIn search results as well. Underneath it all, though, although a lot of people look at it as a sort of very corporate kind of site, is the concept that my grandfather constantly used to say to me is that in business, people buy people. Always have done and always will do. And that is really what is, is the underlying factor within LinkedIn, is that if they buy into you as an individual, then they are much more likely then to buy into your services and your business's services as well. So although people look at it as a very corporate sort of thing, and yes, there are millions of companies who have company pages on LinkedIn, it's the people in those companies where the action really happens. So if, if from now on, as you use LinkedIn, you remember this concept of people by people, that will serve you very well indeed. Fundamentally, LinkedIn's about three core things. Um, there are three core themes, identity and reputation at both a personal and a corporate level. Networking, LinkedIn is a networking site. And that by networking, that means connecting other people together. In, in other words, introducing people to one another, but also building your own network as well. And also about learning 
and sharing knowledge as well. That's fundamentally the three core themes that underlie uh, um, LinkedIn. Interesting, though, that there is no mention of this word, marketing, um, because most of us, and I've positioned this webinar today um, as a way to help you attract more of your ideal clients. Um, so yes, you can use it as a marketing platform, but please remember it's about marketing yourself as an individual and keeping these three core themes in mind all of the time. Now, when it comes to marketing, we're in a very interesting place in the world right now. There's lots of shiny new things that are out there um, that can help us. And there are people who will have you believe that this is how you should be marketing yourself uh, and your expertise as a financial advisor. And this is basically what I used to do up till about two, three years ago. Because you can, my feeling was, well, maybe we should. Um, maybe I should be writing books. Maybe I should put on, be putting on seminars and events. Maybe I should be having a YouTube channel. Maybe I should have a newsletter. Maybe I should be doing all of this stuff. And this is the problem with social media and the internet today is that there are so many competing tools that we feel if I, if I don't use lots of these tools, I'm going to miss out. And the simple fact of the matter is you're not going to miss out. What you're looking at here is completely unsustainable over the long term. Far, far better to have a very clear idea of who is your ideal dream client and then do your marketing where they hang out on the Internet. Now, what's really interesting, my research with financial advisors suggests to me that whilst most financial advisors have got a rough idea of what an ideal dream client looks like, the vast majority have not got a very crystal clear picture of what an ideal dream client looks like. Now, you're going to hear me talking a lot more about the concept of finding ideal dream clients over the coming weeks and months, because when you have a really clear idea of who this person is, um, whether that is an individual or a business or a couple, then you find marketing and getting noticed for your services very, very much easier. So if you want to do this approach, that's absolutely fine. But the more focus you can get on marketing to your ideal dream client, and if you have got a clear idea who your ideal dream client is, then there's a very good likelihood that you will know where they hang out, what they like to do. Uh, what podcasts they like to listen to, what newspapers they like to read, what magazines they, they subscribe to, what clubs they go to, where they go on holiday, where their kids go to school. You will have a very clear idea of where that is. So more of that as, as we go. However, there is one marketing tactic and one marketing approach which time and time again proves itself to be very, very effective. And that is personalization you've probably seen these bottles of coke in in stores and i ask you the very simple question who is going to buy a bottle of coke with the word bobby on it or amy for that matter answer bobby and amy or somebody who is friends with bobby and amy personalized marketing is ridiculously effective uh quite some years ago i was head of national accounts for for zurich life uh, and that meant I was on the product development team, which meant I had access to decision. I've made help make decisions on which advertising agencies we use. So advertising agencies used to pitch their wares to me to try and get their business. And one particular day in the post, this arrived. Um, it looks like a sort of mirror and somebody's written in it, Phil, you change your toothbrush when it's worn out. So why not change your agency? Do you think that got my attention? Well, you know, 25 years later, I'm still showing this particular picture. The same agency, a few months later, sent me this. They sent me this framed, and this was done before Photoshop. This had to be done manually by, by you know, a graphic artist. Do you think that got my attention? Um, of course it did. It got my attention because it had my name on it. So personalized marketing is incredibly effective. And I've got another, another beautiful example. Um, a few years ago, we were selling our house. We lived in Cranley in Surrey at the time. We were selling the house. 
Um, and we went around all the local estate agents uh, just to see, you know, what they what they all had to say. What was quite interesting is they all had to say exactly the same thing. I must have gone in half a dozen different estate agents. They all said exactly the same thing. They all made exactly the same promises. They all hinted that they might give me a discount. And they all looked the same as well. Their all offices looked absolutely identical. And it was actually more confusing than anything else. And at the end of the day, I hadn't, re- I, you know, I just thought, well, I'm, I'm none the wiser. I thought, I'll sleep on this. The following day in the post, I opened uh, the envelope and inside the envelope was a piece of red carpet about 10 inches by uh, by six inches, something like that. And I thought, OK, that's that's interesting. And then I turned the piece of red carpet over to see what was on the other side. And one of those estate agents had handwritten my name on it and put the words, all our clients get the same red carpet treatment. That is beautiful old school marketing that's been personalized i give you that as my free gift today uh get yourself down to your local carpet right buy up 100 yards of red carpet cut it up cut it into squares and every single person who who um, makes your acquaintance as a potential client send them something simple like that it'll get noticed guaranteed so personalized marketing really really works so linkedin is just the perfect medium for personalized marketing. What we have to remember is that LinkedIn is a networking site. We call it a social media site, but in actual fact, it's a social networking site. It was designed and launched in 2003 as a networking site. In the early days, it's in, it, the object of the exercise was that it complemented the networking that you did here in the real world. Um, so, you know, maybe I just met Mike uh, at a conference today with exchange business cards. The idea was we go back home, back to our offices. We check each other out on LinkedIn. Hey, Mike, it was great to see you at the conference today. Let's connect. And we became friends for life. Equally, you could do it the other way around. Maybe you knew that certain people were going to maybe a trade show next week and you're going to the same trade show. You could check them out on LinkedIn first, find out a bit about them so that when you actually met them on the day and exchanged the business cards, you felt like you already knew them. Guess what? LinkedIn still is designed to do exactly the same thing. It is there to complement the networking that we do in the real world. Yes, things have moved on a bit. We can meet complete strangers online. Uh, We can end up doing business with people we've never met before. And certainly during COVID, uh, use of LinkedIn just went absolutely through the roof. So if we try and remember that LinkedIn is a networking platform first and foremost, that then gives us multiple opportunities to have conversations, which by definition, are personalized the more you can personalize your conversations and your messages on linkedin the more likely it will be that people pay more attention to you and buy into you now whenever linkedin comes up in conversation in our facebook group there are a a hardcore group of five ifas in the group who say this and i get it um many of you if you're on linkedin Uh, you will have been approached by recruiters and you might have been approached by a few spammers. You know, that's the way the world works. Nothing the delete key can't deal with. But I'm interested in the recruiters aspect because if you're being approached by recruiters, if you're looking for a new role as a financial advisor, happy days. But if you're not and you're just trying to go about your day-to-day business and you're being approached by recruiters, I have to tell you, It's your fault. It's no one else's fault. And the very simple reason why it's your fault is because the vast majority of financial advisors on LinkedIn position themselves as a kind of generic financial advisor. You kind of look the same as every other financial advisor. And a key message today is do not be a lookalike. One of the problems with lookalikes is that we've all we've all seen them, haven't we? Is that whilst initially it it's interesting, fun, it doesn't take too long before it feels just a little bit weird. People impersonating other people. Um, do not be a lookalike on LinkedIn. Um, if you are being approached by recruiters on LinkedIn, it's your fault. 
And because recruiters are very, very good at looking for generic financial advisors that can be slotted into a position in a particular national firm or, or whatever. So the more you can differentiate yourself on LinkedIn and not look like every other financial advisor, the more successful you're going to be. So let's have a look at 11 things that uh, financial advisors who are already unsuccessful are actually doing each week. First of all, they have a fully completed profile. The single biggest mistake that most financial advisors make on LinkedIn is not fully completing their profile. You really, really need to go into a lot of detail, spend some time. Most of you will have a half completed profile. But if you go onto your profile, ideally on a desktop or a laptop, you will see a drop down at the box that says drop down boxes that said add profile sections. Add as many as those as you possibly can. Fill them out in detail. Um, LinkedIn is a service provider. Remember I said it's also a search engine. LinkedIn does not want to show in search results people who've got half completed profiles. It wants to give people who are searching for experts a really good experience. So LinkedIn prioritizes in search results profiles that have been fully completed. So when you have time, revisit your profile, look at every single section of your LinkedIn profile and add a lot more detail and highlight in particular how you differentiate yourself and in particular who you serve. Really important that you keyword optimize your profile. Just as your website is keyword optimized, keyword optimize your LinkedIn profile as well. So a nice little exercise to do is just to scribble down, maybe brainstorm this. If you have colleagues, brainstorm with your with your colleagues. What do we want to be found for? Or look at it another way. What will be people what will people who are looking for our expertise? What will they be typing into the search box on LinkedIn? Okay, so make sure that the that words that you want to be found for are everywhere throughout your profile. Really, really important. And one exercise I, try, I get financial advisors to do when we do workshops is to come up with about a dozen keywords and then number them in order of importance. So the most important keyword is number one, and then take the top five keywords and put them into every single section of your LinkedIn profile. Top five keywords, every single section of your LinkedIn profile. Now a keyword does not necessarily, is not, it could, it could be, for example, financial planning. That could be a keyword. A better keyword would be financial planning for doctors nearing retirement. If you are a financial planner specializing in uh, retirement planning for doctors, then one keyword will be financial planning for doctors nearing retirement. So when I say keyword optimization what i'm actually really saying is come up with a series of short phrases and sentences that really describe who you are what your expertise is and who you are targeting so if your ideal dream client is doctors nearing retirement then you really want to make your entire linkedin profile totally focused on doctors nearing retirement what the interesting thing is here, if you aim for what you actually want, they the, the LinkedIn algorithm does its stuff. It goes to work. It helps doctors and doctors nearing retirement to find you. I don't know if any of you have experienced this where you get a marketing consultant will approach you and say on LinkedIn and say, hey, give us a grand a month. We will reach out to clients and prospects for you. Guess what? You don't need to do any reaching out at all on LinkedIn. You don't need to pay anyone to do prospect searching for you on LinkedIn. If you position your profile and keyword optimize it and aim it at your ideal dream clients, they will find you by themselves. How cool is that? What will also happen is that in addition to doctors nearing retirement, you also get other people in the medical profession will find you as well. Um, who you may or may not want to work with, but if you still build a relationship with them, they will then be in a position to introduce your ideal dream clients to you. I want this to come across loud and clear. Make your profile 
clear to who your dream client is. Aim it at your ideal dream client. Um, other things that these advisors who are doing really well on LinkedIn is they offer multiple ways to get in contact. One of the things that never ceases to amaze me is the number of financial advisors who never put their email address in the contact details um, of their of their LinkedIn profile. Give people multiple ways to make contact with you. Offer a WhatsApp number, yeah? Offer video calls. Just make it clear that there are multiple different ways to get in contact with you. Um, this uh, be ultra clear about who you who you serve is really important. It's really just building on what I'm saying is aim your profile at your ideal dream client. But throughout your profile, be ultra clear about who you want to work with and who you already work with. Um, ring the bell uh, is a really interesting feature on LinkedIn. It's a very small feature, but it's a very useful one. If you have connected with someone near the top of their profile, uh, underneath the top banner, you will see a little bell. Um, and if you click on that bell, every time that person, that person posts something on LinkedIn, you will get a notification that they, that they have posted. So maybe you're a financial advisor and you want to build relationships with firms of accountants. Maybe you've connected with these firms of accountants. What you want to then do is just click on that little bell. It will turn gray. And then from there on, you will get notified every single time they post something on LinkedIn. That is a really, really useful feature. It used to be a paid feature, but it's now available to absolutely everyone. So you can keep on top of what people, what your target people are actually getting up to on LinkedIn. Uh, in terms of content that these financial advisors are posting, they are posting nothing particularly profound. They are not writing articles about the joys of inheritance tax planning. They may occasionally. But boy, are they dull. Long articles on the joys of inheritance tax planning or retirement planning or pension planning have their place from the point of view of you are adding keywords to the LinkedIn platform that can be associated with you. I'll come on to long articles in a minute or two. But the financial advisors who are really doing well on LinkedIn are the ones who are just posting content about day-to-day -day stuff that's going on in their lives, ideally with images and, and pictures. Uh, we welcomed a new member of staff today, or here's a picture of Bobby, the office dog. Um, I couldn't get a parking place this morning because the council have dug up the cup, the cup whatever. Day-to-day -day trivia humanizes your brand. It might sound, this is cheap this is a bit like facebook but this is what gets attention on linkedin it is also content that does not broadcast or promote anything linkedin's algorithm can tell the difference between content that educates informs and entertains and content that just advertises and promotes and broadcasts the linkedin algorithm can tell the difference so if you post day-to-day -day content that doesn't promote anything the algorithm picks that up it makes your content more visible to more people which means more people get curious about who you are and more people come visit your profile page simple as that and here's the really cool thing if your profile is ultra clear about who you serve and who your ideal dream client is the linkedin algorithm will make sure that more of them come visit your profile We'll talk more about that as we go. Share today, day-to-day -day observations. Comment on other people's posts. Really nice, simple, this one, this one. Not everybody feels comfortable posting their own content, although I'm going to give you some ideas in just a minute or two. But one really easy thing, fairly comfortable, low-risk thing to do is just comment on other people's stuff. Um, and we still have people joining, which is great. Um, and what do I mean by that? So somebody, um, even another financial advisor, post something on there, all you need to do is just go on and say, hey, great post, Mike, or interesting post, Mary, I hadn't thought of that. Thanks, the heads up. That's all you need to do. Why do that? Because the LinkedIn algorithm knows that, that is networking behavior, in other words, supporting other human beings, as opposed to broadcasting behavior, which is just, hey, look at my stuff. So really simple, just comment on other people's posts. If you want to go into more depth on their post, that's absolutely fine. 
but it, it's beautiful because the the algorithm likes it and other human beings like it as well we're talking about human being here beings again look for opportunities to have conversations with people and i'll give you a couple of example with that as well this is what these people are doing um and we've got one more have we or there are two more oh they use their company page as well um company pages have their have their place uh, if you, perhaps you are part of a network or you're part of a national IFA firm, chances are they will have a company page. You want to keep an eye on what's going on on their company page, like and share and comment on your own company page. And if you have your own business, please do set up your own company page and just post periodic stuff from time to time. Why? Because it dramatically increases your reach across the LinkedIn platform. We're not going to go into too much detail about company pages today. For the very simple reason that LinkedIn works for people. We're talking about people buying people. And one final thing that people are doing, uh, these people who are doing really well on LinkedIn, is they check their visibility and privacy settings. Now, after the Cambridge Analytica uh, issue on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn was very, very quick to take a very thorough review of um privacy and visibility one thing i would urge you all to do is spend some time going into the privacy and visibility settings on linkedin they are quite extensive and literally go through every single setting and make yourself as visible as you feel comfortable as i said some people will tell you you want to be posting pictures of your breakfast your feet in in a swimming pool on holiday if you want to do that that's absolutely fine it's human after all but if you want a bit more privacy then tweak your privacy settings to make you feel as comfortable however the one of the reasons this is really important is that some of you will discover to your horror that when you go into the visibility settings you will find that they have somehow been defaulted to almost no visibility at all and when I do one-to-ones with financial advisors, one of the first things we do is look at your privacy and visibility settings. And some some financial advisors, they've been posting on LinkedIn for months, if not years, and their visibility settings are set to almost no visibility. In other words, they're putting content on there, they're doing stuff, but nobody has ever seen it. So you might have reasons why you don't want any of your content to be seen. You might want to be extremely private on LinkedIn, and that's your choice. But what I would suggest to you is whatever your choice is, do that little exercise, check your privacy and visibility settings and make yourself as visible as you feel comfortable. Let me just give you one example. I said earlier that if you've got a fully completed profile on LinkedIn, it will also appear in Google search results. Now, one or two of you might not want your LinkedIn profile showing in Google search results, and you can set that in the, pri the privacy and visibility setting so spend some time do that and make sure you're as visible as you feel comfortable so that's what um financial advisors who are doing really well on linkedin are doing on uh, a consistent weekly basis but we want to put a bit more detail on top of that and what i want to do now is to go through um about 20 25 different ways that you could potentially use linkedin as a financial advisor and they all follow what I call feeding your fish. Um, those of you who've ever kept fish and managed to keep them alive know that you have to feed them. Um, and, you know, if you've got a fish tank, you sprinkle food into your fish tank on a daily basis. And if you do it on the same time every single day, the fish know what time you're going to feed them. And they tend to get quite excited. They swim around, you feed them, feed them with your fish. And I want you to think if you want to put content onto LinkedIn and if you want to actually use it in a constructive way, think of it as feeding your fish. Your network on LinkedIn are the fish and they ideally like consistency. If you've ever done any course on uh, how to use social media effectively the person running the course will tell you you need to do your content on a consistent a consistent basis if that's every month do it at the same time on the same day every month if it's every week do it exactly the same time so those of you who receive our weekly newsletter you know that it goes out every single friday at 2 p.m consistency is everything 
but we want people to get excited, just as the fish will get excited when you start putting the food in there. So number one, I go back to this point, target your ideal client. Um, some might call this niche marketing. And a lot of financial advisors, when I talk about niche marketing, maybe focusing just on dentists or just on accountants or small business owners, they tend to get worried. Well, if I just focus on that market, surely I'm going to miss out on everything else. No, you're not. At the moment, most financial advisors, are it's a bit like finding a needle in a haystack. What If the more you focus on an ideal dream client, the more visible you become and the more you get known for being an expert in that particular in that particular field. Now, niche marketing does not necessarily mean that you're going to decide, right, all my clients from now on are going to be dentists. What it can also what it can actually mean that say I've got 100 clients and it seems that five of them are dentists. That's absolutely fine. That suggests that enough dentists think that you've got sufficient ex expertise that it's worth them working with you. It is worth doing an audit of your client bank and just having a look at who have you got more of than anybody else. And, and it may well be that you would like more of those because you have expertise in those. Ideally, on LinkedIn, focus all your efforts on getting your ideal client, whoever that might be. One thing you need to do is write a client persona. Sounds very marketing speak, but it's well worth doing. If you've never written a client persona before, I would urge you to go to ChatGPT or uh, an AI of your choice and explain to, to literally go to ChatGPT and type in what sort of clients you like working with uh tipping and why you like working with them and literally say to it i would like to work more with more of these people uh, why because i have expertise in this i know and literally tell it something about what an ideal client and then ask chat gpt to say write a client persona and it will come up with the most fabulous document which you can then use uh, literally at the heart of all your future marketing on how you approach this particular uh, dream client so in your LinkedIn profile, be clear about who you want to uh, focus. And in your LinkedIn profile, actually use words and phrases that tell those people uh, who you are. So, for example, one of the things you could put in your LinkedIn profile is, are you a heart surgeon nearing retirement and concerned about your level of future income? Literally put that in your profile. The algorithm will make sure that heart surgeons actually find you. They will see that. And that will really ring all the right curiosity uh, bells for them. Um, you want to get to a point where if the right clients are visiting your profiles, that they see you as their natural choice. They actually see you as the only choice. One of the problems with, as I mentioned, with financial advisors on LinkedIn is everybody looks the same. Everybody says exactly the same thing. It's the same with financial advisors' websites. And I have to be cruel to be kind here. Most financial advisors' websites all say the same thing. I can do a party piece at conferences where I can write the About Us page for any financial advisor in the room without having met them. And I can do that because, broadly speaking, they all say the same thing. You don't want to be a lookalike on LinkedIn. You really do need to stand out from the crowd. So clear message today, target your ideal client. Okay. The single most valuable feature on LinkedIn is this one here. It's hidden away at the top of your profile. Uh, it's in a slightly different position on the mobile app on it, but on the desktop, this is the most valuable feature on LinkedIn. Why is it the most valuable feature on LinkedIn? because when you click on it, it shows you who looked at your profile. Let me put it another way. If I was to say to you, would you like the names and addresses of everyone who looked at your website? Would any of you find that useful? Just put your hand up if you find that useful, if you'd like the names and addresses of everyone who looks at your website. And I know some of you are thinking this is a trick question. I know the answer is, of course, you would like to know the names and addresses. Now, unfortunately, you can't get the names and addresses of everyone who looks at your website. You can get a lot of other data, um, but you can't get the names and addresses. 
But on LinkedIn, that is exactly what you get. Now, my prime target target market is financial advisors. And when I click on who's viewed my profile, this is what I see. This is the last five people um, who looked at my profile. Um, So I know that I've got my keyword optimization strategy right. I know that my profile is aimed at exactly the right people because the right people are looking at my profile. And I've got a process for what I do next. And I'll explain what I do next and how you can use the exact same process as well. So this is the single most valuable feature on LinkedIn. We're assuming you've got your profile uh, set up correctly. This is what you should be looking at every single day. Now, some people say to me, Phil, should I have premium membership of LinkedIn? Most financial advisors do not need to pay to use LinkedIn. I happen to think that premium membership of LinkedIn is quite expensive for what you actually get. But I pay for the premium membership for one reason and one reason alone. It's so I can see the full list of people who looked at my profile. If you're on the free version of LinkedIn, you get to see the last five people. And even that is fine. So if you're looking at your profile on a daily basis or even a weekly basis, you're still going to see a decent list of people um, that you can follow up with. Okay, here's another thing that uh, you can do. Now, everything I'm showing you now is not compulsory. You don't have to do it. Um, But it's things that work on LinkedIn. So some of these things will be better for others than you'll are. One thing you can do is leverage your alumni network. Uh, So the young lady on the right is my daughter. Uh, She graduated uh, from Portsmouth University a few weeks ago. Um, And her her network really began when she was at secondary school, just like, you know, yours did. It then grows and develops and matures as you go to university. But one network, one network that you can use as financial advisors is put on events and particularly webinars just aimed at your school and university contacts. Why? Because they already know you for the most part. It's a network. There are networks around us absolutely everywhere. You already have something in common with them. Uh, And I'll show you something a little bit later, which will show you just how powerful this is. So think 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 of your alumni network as a potential client opportunity. And remember also that individuals within that network may not necessarily become clients indeed you may not want them to be clients but because you know them and you offer value to them it makes it much more likely that they will introduce you to people that they know remember this is not always about i connect with somebody on linkedin we're going to do business together actually what's much more likely to happen is that you will support each other by introducing one another to useful contacts Feedback loop. Um, Here's an interesting thing that I see some financial advisors doing, where you put on LinkedIn posts about forthcoming client meetings. Now, clearly, you're not going to give the client's name and and location and and personal details. Um, And posts about upcoming presentations. In other words, things that you're going to be doing, post about them on LinkedIn. And that helps uh, your followers to get a better understand for what you do in your day-to-day work and your day-to-day world. But what you might also want to do is ask for a, a advice. You know what you're going to do, but asking for advice is very, very powerful. So think about that on posts about what you're going to do, as well as things that you are doing and things that you have done. Uh, another thing you might want to do is a monthly client case, uh, spotlight or, or a case study. Uh, this could be an article. It could be a video. It could be a PowerPoint presentation. All of these things can be posted on LinkedIn. So pose a problem that a client had. Again, we're not going into personal details, but pose a problem, pose a goal, pose an issue that you or a client is facing, uh, particularly clients, and talk about how you worked through that, what action plans you did, and so on and so forth. Again, this is another way to educate people on what you actually do as a financial advisor. I have this theory that the overwhelming majority of the general public out there in our target markets have no idea what financial planning is. 
we can have a stab at it, but they actually have no idea. I think that financial planning is one of those services that people don't actually get it until they've experienced it. And that's why they then refer you to other people. Once they've experienced, they go, oh, right, okay, I wish I'd done this years ago. The more we can educate consumers as to actually what we do and how we work through problems and issues that our clients have, the easier it is for them to associate with what's actually going on there. Uh, so education, really, really key. LinkedIn is a fantastic tool for doing that. Here's another one. Why don't you set up your own book club? Um, it doesn't have to be for other financial planners, though other financial planners could do it. It could be online, go on to LinkedIn and, and say, look, we've just set up a, a kind of virtual book club. Um, some of our clients uh, are joining it. Uh, in, indeed, have a book club amongst your own clients. It could be just a fun thing that, that you like to do. And it doesn't have to be personal finance books. It can be personal finance. It can be personal development, business development. It could be nonfiction. It could be fiction, whatever. Set up a book club with your clients, but also extend membership of that book club to people on LinkedIn as well. Interesting one you might want to think about. Another one, uh, behind the scenes. I talked about earlier about posts on LinkedIn that just talk about things that you're doing. Maybe a glimpse behind the scenes. Again, more education to consumers as to what you actually do as a financial advisor. Um, run a little camera around the office, do a meet the staff, meet the team, um, talk about what you do in the local community. Maybe you sponsor the local kids football team. Maybe you sponsor the local Crown Green Bowling Club. Just do behind the scenes as to what's going on in your business. And again, whilst this is the sort of thing that, that you really ought to be doing on your website and a blog if you have it, but extend that to LinkedIn as well, because LinkedIn uh, is a powerful, that fits extremely well with. What else could you do? Well, I talked about articles. Yes, you can write articles on LinkedIn. If you are that sort of person and you like writing uh, articles and insights, then LinkedIn is a great place to do that. And they actively encourage you to do that. However, you cannot get away with a couple of paragraphs. When LinkedIn first introduced the articles feature, a lot of people were just bunging on a couple of paragraphs. Um, and because it was a new feature, LinkedIn uh, gave it lots of visibility, but you can't do that anymore. If you want to post articles on LinkedIn, by articles, it could be an article, it could be a special report, it could be a white paper, whatever. They do need to be long and detailed, long and detailed, ideally based on research that you've done yourself. I know one particular financial planner, their entire marketing strategy is based on long, in-depth, detailed, research-based articles. And it works an absolute dream for them. If anybody's interested in that strategy, just drop me a line and I'll explain more about how they how they actually do it. Um, you might be thinking, I haven't really got the time uh, or energy to do that sort of thing. But of course, you can always outsource articles to other people. Uh, you could also use AI as well. Clearly, AI bakes the cake, but you put the finessing and the icing on it. And you don't want to put anything onto LinkedIn that an AI has written that you've not been through with a fine tooth comb. But that's another way of producing some long, detailed content as well. It works really, really well if you have the time and the inclination to actually do it. Financial news roadmaps. Uh, real uh, roundups. Really interesting one, this one. Um, just comment on financial news that's being posted elsewhere. I know one financial advisor who does this as a, as a, as a weekly podcast every Monday morning. Um, he does a, 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 a not, not a podcast, a, web, a webinar. Every Monday morning, like clockwork, he does a review of the personal, of the weekend personal finance pages from the Saturday Telegraph, the Mail on Sunday, and the Sunday Times. Like it or not, journalists in this country are educating consumers about personal finance. My personal belief is that we should be doing that, not journalists. Journalism has its place. We should be doing that. However, if you haven't got the time or the inclination, then what you can do is find something that a journalist has written in, say, the Saturday Telegraph, and just write about it. So this particular financial advisor does a um, weekly 
webinar where he literally he's torn an article out the Saturday Telegraph and he says, really interesting article in Saturday Telegraph about inheritance tax planning. Good article. It made this point, this point, this point, but they missed this key point and this key point. In other words, put your spin and your icing on their cake. Yeah. Um, and I actually found an example I saw only a couple of days ago. Some of you may know Alan Smith, a financial planner in London. Uh, he uses LinkedIn extensively. And, you know, this is something that literally I've just copied this uh, useful article by Myra O'Neill in the Weekend Financial Times, and he summarizes what they wrote. How easy is that to do? Yeah. Somebody else wrote it, but he's putting his own spin on it as well. And I think that is a really powerful way of not only does it position you as uh, more authoritative than than a journalist, but, you know, it, it shows that you have expertise, you have credibility, you have experience, you know what you're talking about. So there's an easy way to create content on LinkedIn. And again, the LinkedIn, LinkedIn platform works particularly well for that. OK, here's another one. Spotlight interviews. Um, this is sort of thing you can do in a variety of different ways. It tends to be done as as, as podcasts. Uh, there's a small number of really quite good podcasts in uh, UK financial planning world. They are that good. They are so good. I'm surprised more financial planners don't do them. Um, but you could uh, record a little video. You could record some audio. Just interview other financial professionals. Interview local business people. Maybe you work with local business owners, so just interview them, record them, ask them to talk to you about how did you get started in your business? How do you find it? How did you fare during COVID? Just have a chat with them, record it. If you want to steer it around to personal finance, then fine. It's a simple and easy way to create content. And once again, LinkedIn is a great platform to put that out. Okay. A quick sip of water. I hope you're finding this useful so far. Okay, onwards. Financial challenges. I think um, we see this all the time. Um, the master at financial challenges um, is, I've forgotten her name. Oh, my goodness, I was only looking at her stuff a little bit earlier. Uh, I'll, I'll remember her name. There's a, there's a financial planner. She's a financial coach. Somebody remind me of her name. What's her name? Um, she posts financial challenges onto Facebook, onto Instagram, simple things that people can join. Uh, do it on a monthly basis, invite participation. It also encourages interaction. And once again, it positions you uh, as a leader as well. Simple financial challenges. Again, if you're not sure what challenges, again, ChatGPT is your friend. Go on to ChatGPT and, and write and type in, I want to create five financial challenges. Um, between now and the end of the year, I want them to cover off this kind of angle. Give me some ideas. And it will come up with a whole bunch of different suggestions that take it, take it or leave it. Uh, so use financial challenges. Once again, they work really well. Infographics, super powerful. Not everybody wants to read your content. Some people just like to look at pretty pictures. Um, I have a lovely example of a financial uh, advisor in the United States, um, who did quite a lot in the in the mortgage market. And he used to write article after article about how to improve your credit score. Uh, even his colleagues said, well, this is good, useful stuff, but it's a little bit boring after a while. Is there another way that you could do this? And he thought, well, I could do, I could come up with some infographics on how to improve your credit score. And one that worked an absolute dream on LinkedIn was he created like a, a snakes and ladders game where you went along and if you did something something well, you hadn't maxed out your credit card, you could go up a ladder. However, uh, if you did something that would affect your credit card, you would then credit credit score, you would then go down one of the snakes. Super simple thing to do. You don't need to be a graphic designer to do this. Just go on to Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. They've got ready-made infographics where you can just drag and drop, add in your own things, or even outsource it to somebody on Fiverr or People Per Hour, one of those sites, and get them to do this, yeah? Again, want some ideas? Just go on to an AI, go to ChatGPT, and so I want to come up with some financial-related um, infographics. Give me some ideas, and it will do that for you. Then just either go to Canva 
or somebody in your business can do it or outsource it. It costs you next to nothing. They are really visual. They look absolutely great. And a lot of people prefer them to uh, to written material. Um, how about some, let's take infographics to, a, to a, another level. Um, a video WhatsApp conversation. How about this? This is one that I did to promote um, my latest book is uh, Lead Generation for Later Life financial advisors, specifically for equity release advisors. So I had uh, this, I'm not going to show it all, but um, just take a quick look at this while I grab a sit. There you go. That one simple uh, little video that I posted on LinkedIn has sold me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of copies of that book. Really easy to do. If anybody would like a link to the guy I use to create these things, and, I, and that's quite a long one, but you can see where I'm where I'm going with this thing. Um, if anybody want, wants uh, a link to the guy that does these things, you know, you're only limited by your own imaginations as to how you could use something like that. And this works because everybody's familiar with WhatsApp conversations, yeah? So why not turn it into a really simple little conversational marketing tool? Drop me a line afterwards and I'll send you a link to the guy that does this. They cost like $5 um, <laughs> to do that. Okay, onwards. Polls and surveys. I think we've all seen polls and surveys on LinkedIn, but they are interactive. People find it difficult to resist polls on LinkedIn, uh, gauges what your audience thinks about certain topic, increases engagement, and it gives you data. Really simple. Think about that. Again, go to ChatGPT and say, I want to do some polls on various aspects of financial planning. Give me suggestions. It will come up with the ideas for you. Um, your birthday. One of, the, one of the privacy settings on LinkedIn is to choose whether or not your, your birthday is visible. It doesn't show you what year you were born in, but it does show... Um, it does show the the date and the month. But the really cool thing is LinkedIn, um, literally a day before your birthday, it sends a message to all your connections to say, hey, it's Phil's birthday uh, tomorrow. Wish him happy birthday. And they give you some ready-made things to do. Last November the 13th, which was my birthday, I had 438 messages on LinkedIn from people wishing me happy birthday, which is cool. Um, but it gave me... 438 opportunities to restart conversations. Think of that. Now, I used a bit of cut and paste, but every single one of them was personalized. Hey, Harry, thanks for wishing me happy birthday. Really appreciate that. How's things going on in your business right now? Is there anyone I can introduce you to? 
LinkedIn is about conversations. People buy people. Use the tools that LinkedIn give you, and you'll be amazed at the results that you get. Quizzes. Um, th this is my secret weapon now on LinkedIn. Uh, you may have seen me talking about scorecards. A scorecard is a quiz. It's a self-assessment tool. Um, it's an MOT. It's a health check, whatever you whatever you, you want to call it. Um, it works an absolute treat. Uh, and I'll show you how I use it in just a minute. And it is astonishing how effective it is. Uh, last couple of things here. Video testimonials. The single most powerful feature of a financial advisor's website is a video testimony. If you are not posting video testimonials on the homepage of your website, please, please do it. You want people sitting on their own sofa saying, uh, I met Mike uh, two years ago and he changed our lives. If we hadn't met Mike, um, I don't know what we, you know, stuff, human stuff. This is what people say in video testimonials. What people don't say is, oh, I'm so delighted that he invested me 80% in equities and so much in bond. They don't say that. What they say is the human stuff. They say how you changed their life. That is irresistible on financial advisors' websites. Uh, it, and it doesn't need to cost much these days. You can do it on your mobile phone. Better to spend a few quid, and even then it won't be much at all. Get it done properly approach a few of your clients and say we've, we're really looking for some video testimonials from clients we've really loved working with you with, with uh, would you be willing to do that some will say most will probably say no but you only need three or four of these for people to say yes to get that human thing please get video testimonials it will transform the effectiveness of your website literally transform it guess what you can also post those video testimonials on your linkedin profile as well um, here's another thing where you might gonna, you might want to get um, a bit more visible about your personal situation. Um, we see this happening quite a lot. It's not for everyone, this one, but where you share your own personal financial journey, mistakes that you've made, maybe things that you've learned, or maybe if you don't want to do that, you can talk about how you got into financial advice. What was it about financial advice and financial planning that really got your attention? So an opportunity to be authentic, I think is the, the phrase people like to use. Mistakes, lessons, achievements, again, it humanizes your brand, um, and that is very, very appealing as well. A couple more, themed days, money tip Mondays, financial frat Fridays. If you do this on a consistent and regular basis, come up with simple, um, people know it's, it's back to the feeding the fish again. If you do it at the same time, same day of the week, people get to know it and they actually start to look forward to seeing it. They expect to see these things as well. Interactive case studies. Here's an interesting one I've seen a few people doing where you present a real or a pretend financial scenario. Real ones look so much better, by the way. Ask your followers what they would do and collect responses. Yes, you'll get other financial advisors um commenting on it as well doesn't matter what we're really doing here is playing to the linkedin algorithm yes you will be adding some value to people that value what you've been posting but uh present real or pretend scenarios um this is often done in seminars and workshops where a financial advisor will pay, post will will go through a case study live case studies with real people are even better uh, so present a case study on linkedin and ask for feedback on how different people would deal with it. Now, you already know how you're going to deal with it, but that's not the point. The point is you're being open um, and you're looking for response. But you, what you're also doing is playing to the LinkedIn algorithm as well. How to lists are incredibly effective on LinkedIn. Keep them simple. So think about your ideal target market and come up with some how to posts or even lists. Uh, these are really, really effective on LinkedIn. Um, there's evidence to show if you limit the number of characters in the title to 49, that seems to get people's attention. And if you include multiple images in these list posts or how-to posts as well, that dramatically increases the amount of engagement that you get as well. So think about lists, think about how-to posts, 
Um, you could do this in a variety of different ways. You could just literally type them out, or you could do a video version as well, if you so felt. Ask me anything. You quite often see sort of influencers um, doing this on uh, Instagram, where they just say, right, ask me anything. Um, a lot of rock stars and pop stars who like to engage with their fans on social media, they do this as well. Ask me anything. Again, it's not for everyone, but if you feel that's something for you, um, people will love to do that as well. Short video tutorials where you literally explain complex uh, financial complex uh, financial concepts in simple terms. Again, this is all part of education. What you're probably seeing is as a theme to all of these that I'm showing. We're talking about educating consumers and what we're doing through these processes just doing it in a variety of different way different ways you and i know about financial planning you and i understand financial concepts well you understand them a lot better than i do but the vast majority of people out there they would welcome simple explanations but just as much, you could also do some real complex ones as well if you want to. Never ceases to amaze me. In our Facebook group, there are some people who love to give really, really complex answers. And there's always a place for that as well. So we don't want to dumb down everything. LinkedIn showcase pages. Um, very few financial advisors uh, use these or even know that they exist. So a showcase page is a sub page underneath a company page. So if you've got your company page, you can also have seven showcase pages so you could have a company page that just focuses on say retirement planning you could have a showcase page that just focuses on say equity release or protection you could have a separate company page for just that just focuses on different topics as well again if you have the time you have the inclination these just again dramatically expand your reach onto linkedin collaborative posts uh perhaps where you write an article with other people you can now write collaborative create collaborative articles on linkedin as well uh, sometimes in your linkedin feed you will be offered the opportunity to add your own comments to an article that someone else has written look out for those this is something that linkedin is is doing more and more of and they work they work really well as well but maybe you've got a local accountant that you work with just approach them and say why don't we write an article together about xyz topic as well uh, think about how you could how you could do that as well um now this this one yeah, is is amazing um i've talked about alumni earlier earlier um now you can expand this in a variety of different ways um linkedin have got company pages for different schools not all schools have got a company page on linkedin but most universities do have so this is royal holloway it has its own company page on linkedin now i discovered that the school i went to um in leatherhead has got its own company page on linkedin and linkedin tells me the most basic uh, information is that 143 of the staff at St. John's uh, are on LinkedIn. Um, that's interesting. That's interesting for me as a trainer is that there could be potential for me to actually approach the members of staff and say, as perhaps as part of your careers event, would you like somebody who can show your students how to use LinkedIn? And I have done that many times. It also tells me that there are 1,751 people who follow their page you will notice the bell i have clicked the bell so every time st john's posts something i get notified about it as well but here's the really cool bit out of all the people who are on linkedin who went to the same school linkedin gives me some very interesting data now look at that left hand column it's telling me that seven people who went to the same school as me are on linkedin and work at the NHS. Four of them work at Sky, University of Equator, Schroeder's, King's College London. That's really interesting. They all hire in trainers, they all hire in coaches. I could, if I click on any of those bars, let's take the PWC one there. I could just click on PWC there and it will show me the names of those five people who went to the same school as me. What's the, what's, what's the relevance of that? 
we have something in common. And I want to sort of finish off now by talking about things that we have in co- having things in common is so incredibly powerful on LinkedIn. Now, those five people at P- who work at PwC, they won't necessarily have been at St. John's the same time as me. Doesn't matter. I can send them a message and I'm going to show you my script message in a minute. I could message them and I guarantee you they will accept my connection request. It shows me where they live. It shows me what they do. That is incredible, use, incredibly useful data for me to have. So do not discount your school or your college or your university as potential opportunities because LinkedIn shows you the companies they work. And when you approach them, they are much more likely to accept your connection request because you have something in common. Okay, a couple of bits on uh, different types of posts as well. Real human stories. Uh, I'm conscious of time. This is a particular one where um, I was going to be speaking at a conference in Bulgaria. Um, I needed to uh, go to the post office. I needed to go and hair, haircut. But before I did, um, I checked the price of parking um, at um, Heathrow or Gatwick. I can't remember what it was. And it quoted me a particular price. I went to have my haircut, went to the post office, came back, and the parking had gone up. I posted that on LinkedIn. This is what I posted. Exactly what I've just told you. I checked the price. It was 27 quid. I came back. I rebooked it. It had gone up to 52 pounds. Yeah, we've all done it. Yeah. That post got 1,200 likes, 227 comments, multiple profile visits, 23 direct messages, 21 conversations, and I ended up with five pieces of business. All those 227 comments all said the same thing. And we all know what those comments would have been. Um, But simply by posting something where I'd copped up, to coin a phrase, I ended up with five pieces of business as a direct result. Human stories. At the beginning of COVID, John Young, BBC journalist, he did a shift at Broadcasting House, came out, someone had nicked his bike. He tied it to the rail, chained it to the railings, somebody had basically pinched it so he posts a quick video on his mobile phone saying how unkind people are blah 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 this is a really powerful type of post it's got emotion it's attention grabbing it creates curiosity Um, there's a message in there about kindness and so on and so forth that's a really good LinkedIn post Um, you want to get cute that works as well And I know some of you thinking this is inappropriate for LinkedIn. Who says it's inappropriate for LinkedIn? It works. It gets attention. Look at this one. 1,700 likes. 227 people had nothing better to do than to comment on this particular post. Uh, Another one. Uh, Nick runs a Bentley dealership and he took a picture of a lime green Bentley sitting in his um, front yard. Look at this. 1,300 comments. This is day-to-day stuff that's going on in people's lives. This one, you may have even seen this one. This one even hit the news. Emily was HR manager at Asda. I met an elderly gentleman in Leeds, asked me how her day was, stopped and had a coffee, cancelled some meetings, spent two hours with this wonderful man. He opened doors. Now, the rights and wrongs and the wares and wherefore of uh, having a coffee with a complete stranger is another matter altogether. But look at that. It had 230,000 likes, 11,000 comments. I'll lay money. I ought to ask her, actually. Uh, she would have been made job offers just from that one post. And another one. This is the same lady where she posted uh, a picture of on the left on LinkedIn. of This was her profile photo that she used to use before COVID. She didn't get COVID, but she worked. But during COVID, she was working from home like everybody else. And that's the profile picture she changed it to um, during COVID period. Look at that. Over half a million engagements with that particular post. Humans buy into other human beings' stories. People buy people. This is how you use LinkedIn. Uh, pro tip. Use pictures. The more pictures you can use, use a collage. That one there, that was a collage, yeah? Create collages on LinkedIn 
they dramatically increase the amount of engagement and comments uh, that those particular posts get. Well worth thinking about that one. This is not what you should be doing on LinkedIn. I see so many financial advisors doing this. They go onto LinkedIn, check out our latest blog, it's great, click here. LinkedIn will penalize that post. LinkedIn will penalize that individual who posted it. It penalizes it by making you less visible in search results because the algorithm says, that's broadcast behavior, that's not networking behavior. So try to avoid. Now, if you are regularly posting the sort of content that I've been talking about today, absolutely fine. Chuck one or two of these in from time to time. That's absolutely fine. But if this is your sole content strategy on LinkedIn, please don't do that sort of stuff. Um, LinkedIn newsletters are all the rage. Right now, just in Q1 this year, there were 150 million newsletter subscriptions on LinkedIn. So our Life Talk Insider newsletter that we send out, uh, we also do a version of that on LinkedIn um, every single week as well. I've been utterly gobsmacked by how quickly people want to subscribe to this, this sort of thing. Um, as to what you put into your newsletter is entirely up to you. Maybe you already do a newsletter, maybe you can adapt that, but starting a LinkedIn newsletter, people love that sort of stuff. And if you are already posting valuable content onto LinkedIn, then there is no reason why people won't want to subscribe to that as well. Now, communicating with people, I promised I would show you a couple of scripts. You're going to look at this script and you're going to think they're pretty underwhelming, uh, but they work. So people are looking at your profile. First thing you need to do when you're when people look at your profile is try and figure out why has this person looked at my profile. The next thing you need to do is look for something that you have in common and then use a script. There are three different ways that you can message someone who has looked at your profile or indeed message anyone else for that thing. Do not use in-mail. It is an utter waste of time. Absolute waste of time. And you, there's, there is no point in paying for something that most people just use as a, as a spam tool. You can still message people who've never met you, don't know you, you from Adam. You can still message people uh, for free. Now, you can either send them a written message through the LinkedIn messaging system, or you can use the mobile app and send them an audio message. I guarantee you they will listen to it. And you can also send a video message through uh, the LinkedIn mobile app as well. Do you think people will pay attention to a video message? Of course they will. Absolutely, they will. However, most of you will send written messages. So this is the script that you'll use. So someone's looked at your profile. And I'm going to break this down in a second. Hi, use their name. And put an ellipsis after their name, the three little dots. The three little dots are a psychological copywriting technique that encourage people to keep reading if they see dot 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 they say there's got to be more to read they will keep reading thanks for taking a look at my profile in other words you are acknowledging something they did i hope you found something of interest let me know if i can introduce you to anyone in my network that is a networking behavior and it works to one of the six universal laws of human influence. In other words, there are six core things that human beings can do that influence other human beings. One of them is called reciprocity. If I offer to give you something, it makes it a lot more likely that you will give me something back. All you are looking for here is their attention. So please let me know if I can introduce you to any of our network nine times out of ten they don't but it does happen occasionally in the meantime it'd be great to connect as i see we have something in common nine times out of ten if a complete stranger looks at your profile on linkedin you will have something in common it could be mutual connections there will be that more often than not it could be a location it could be a school it could be a university try and find something that you've got in common thanks in advance with the ellipsis by putting thanks in advance at the end of a LinkedIn message or even an email, it's been proven to dramatically increase the likelihood that they will reply. Um, so that message looks really underwhelming on the surface. This message gets me near 100% success rate when I want to connect with people. Near 100%. Just copy it and model it and adapt it. 
and you'll be amazed at how that works. Okay, so look for something in common, use a script and always personalize it. So even people, so let's say you want to, you spotted an accountant you want to work with, or you spotted your dream client on LinkedIn, send them this. Use their name, use the ellipsis, use I spotted you on LinkedIn. That suggests to them that they did something that you noticed. They did something. And notice that we've got a number of mutual connections or find what you've got in common. It'd be great to connect. Thanks in advance with the ellipsis and then your name again. Again, this looks really underwhelming. It works. Okay. Don't try to reinvent the wheel with something that actually works. Um, fine. So looking for things that you've got in common, really, really powerful. And let me show you some examples of how I've used this. Um, I use I do a bit of kickboxing, or well, I certainly did up till COVID. So let's imagine I want to find a speaking opportunity um, at a bank. I love speaking it at, for, in large financial services organizations because they tend to pay well. Lots of people go along. I'm going to sell a lot of books. So let's use kickboxing to find me a speaking opportunity at a bank. So I type kickboxing into the search. OK, I don't need premium membership to do this. It gives me 50,000 results. Most of the first few pages are kickboxing instructors. I don't want a kickboxing instructor. I've already got a very good one. What I want is someone who works in a bank. So what I now do is I go to the filters and I filter it down to London or wherever. And I choose financial services as another filter as well. It redoes the search and it finds me this gentleman here. Now, if this gentleman was the guy who books speakers for their annual conference, that would be amazing. It's not going to happen, is it? He just works at the bank. So I'm going to now have a look at Rui's profile and I have a look and see, and it turns out he's quite hardcore at his martial arts. But he is my way in to Barclays. So what message should I send to Rui? Do you think I should send him this message? Of course not. I've yet to have find anyone who would agree with me that that is the message I should send. Yet. 99.9% .9 of people on LinkedIn never bother to customize their connection message. Why? We're dealing with human beings here, people by people. So I don't send him that. This is what I actually sent him. So I found two things that we have in common. We're in financial services and we both do martial arts. There's no way he's going to decline that connection request. No way. And also, just for a laugh, the first line there as well. What do you think happened? We ended up going to have a coffee uh, in a Starbucks just up the road from his office in central London. We chatted about martial arts and I didn't say to him what I did. We just waited for I just waited for the moment where he turned to me and said, so, so Phil, what do you do? I said, well, actually, I speak at financial services conferences events. And that's how I got to speak at Barclays annual sales conference. And I've done exactly the same thing with Santander, NatWest, Standard Life, Scottish Widows and countless others. I use the search tool and I look for things where we have in common. I've done it with yoga as well. Let's say I want to meet a conf uh, someone who wants to book speakers for conferences. Sometimes these organizations go through a speaker bureau. So I want to find one of them. So I type yoga, something I do. It finds me 657,000 results. Most of those are yoga teachers. I don't want a yoga teacher. What I want is a speaker booker. So again, I use the filters. It shows me another set of results and it finds me 420 people who book speakers for events and they do yoga. And I pick these ones off one by one, send them that same. Hey, I spotted you on LinkedIn. I noticed we both do yoga. I don't say then, would you like to book me? I then say, what type of yoga do you do? And I get a near 100% success rate on these particular things. It just works. But we've got to get to a point where we understand um we've made a connection we've got something in common happy days all around but we then now got to think about the next step what do we do next my advice is we've got to take people off linkedin in that previous case we took him i took him to a coffee shop in central london 
you really need to be thinking about, and this is what financial advisors who are doing really well on LinkedIn actually do, is they think about what do I do next? We're not going to do financial planning over the chat messaging tool on LinkedIn. We've got to meet. So think, how do I want to steer the conversation? So what I do is uh, I do a lot of LinkedIn consultancy. And I said earlier, it's important to know where your target clients hang out. So I do LinkedIn consultancy. Have a guess where my target clients hang out. They're on LinkedIn. So everybody who looks at my LinkedIn profile, or if I spot a likely suspect, what I do is we get that conversation going. And at some point in that question, I'll say to them, hey, uh, Chris, I noticed it's, it, it's great to, to meet you here on LinkedIn. Just out of interest, as a financial planner, how do you find LinkedIn? Does it work for you? And Chris replies, well, too many recruiters, or sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I said, well, why don't we just check out how effectively you are actually using LinkedIn? Why don't you take my quiz? Remember I talked about scorecards and quizzes earlier? This is what I point financial advisors to. I say, take my financial advisor LinkedIn health check. It'll take you five minutes. It'll ask you a bunch of questions. And at the end, you'll get a score and a personalized report which shows your strengths and weaknesses and how you could make improvements on LinkedIn. Hundred, almost, I almost get a 100% success rate when I point people, particularly financial advisors, to my LinkedIn health check. And I've got other online health checks. I've got a marketing one aimed at financial advisors as well. They, let's look at your strengths and weaknesses in how you do your marketing. Take my LinkedIn health check. It's free. I'll give you a free copy of my book once you go through it. They go through it. They get valuable data or rather they get value right up front. I get data. Remember I said earlier, would you like to know the names and addresses of everyone who looks at your, your, your website? This is how you can do it. If you point people to your quiz or your scorecard, not only will they give you their name and contact details, you actually do, a, you get to find out in-depth information about them. Here's a business consultant over in the United States, a guy called Buddy Cummings. He's a business coach. This is how he uses it on LinkedIn. Everybody he talks to on LinkedIn, at some point, he says, hey, why don't you take my, my business quiz, your freedom factor scorecard, as he calls it. Are you spending your time in the right areas or would a shift in your efforts or focus make massive impact on your organization? What have people got to lose? They've already built a relationship uh, on LinkedIn with him. He's offering some free value. They go through it. He's got himself a hot lead, not a warm lead, a hot lead. He's got their contact details. He's got their email address. And I'm seeing more and more financial advisors starting to do this as well now. But they're, they're starting, to, most financial advisors, they sort of plug it into their website. That's fine. A better place to use it is on LinkedIn. You get these conversations going. You say, why don't you just find out whether or not you could build a, a stronger, more secure financial future? Just take my quick quiz. Uh, here's another one, uh, which equity release advisors are using. Are you ready to live a more fulfilled retirement? And people who are curious about equity release, but they still think there's a few problems with equity release, what have they got to lose by going through that? Here's another one. Remember I mentioned earlier the financial planning firm that uses articles um, in depth. It, it's an amazing strategy for them. In every single article they post, there is a link to their how ready are you for retirement and life after work scorecard. And almost everybody who reads their articles, they get value from the article. And they go, oh, hold on, I can now get personalized value. And they point them to this as well. Here's another one that I see a financial advisor using. Uh, and here's another equity release one that another financial advisors. So what I'm saying is, yes, build a relationship. That's great. But think about what value should I be pointing to people at the appropriate time? And these kind of, these kind of quizzes work really, really well. So don't just point people to your website, point them to something where people can get additional value over and above where the relationship has already started. So we're nearly there. Just a, a few more to go. I mentioned automation. There are lots and lots of tools out there that you can use that will do everything I've just told you by itself. It will find people. It will make connections with people. Trust me, LinkedIn knows when people are using bots and robots and automation tools. Um, and you will get kicked off LinkedIn uh, if you're using, if you're overusing them. Um, the tool that I use 
is a tool that makes the messaging that I send very much quicker. It's called Very Fast. I type out my scripts into this software. And when I want to send somebody a particular message, I just do a couple of key shifts, a couple of key clicks on my keyboard, and it and it embeds the message and it personalizes it with their name, which is even better as well. Super fast. It's free. You can also use it on email as well. Uh, very fast. It's a Google Chrome plugin, but it also plugs into uh, whatever the micro, the Microsoft um, browser is called as well. It's absolutely super tool. So it's not a bot. It's just a tool that drops ready-made content into a message, but it also personalizes it with people's names as well. So it's just to start wrapping up. Right at the beginning, I said, it would be great if you could get to the point where you look at LinkedIn as more than just some social tool that somebody suggested you use and start realizing, actually, this thing's pretty impressive. There's a whole bunch of different ways I could use it as a financial advisor. Uh, I don't like half the ones that Phil said today, but I'm going to give a give a, a go. I'm going to try out a couple of the ones. I would be really pleased if most of you went away today and said, I'm going to give that idea a go or I'm going to give that idea a go. Um, and start treating LinkedIn as a powerful asset of your business, yeah? One of the messages I say to students when I speak in, in sick forms is that, yeah, you put a lot of effort into your CV, but a lot of uh, employers these days will want to see your social media. In particular, they want to see your LinkedIn, and your LinkedIn needs to look different from your CV. And the problem with a lot of financial advisors is their LinkedIn profiles look just like their CVs. And that's why the recruiters are particularly interested in you. So take it seriously. Here's a summary. Fully complete your profile. Aim it at your ideal dream client. Remember that it's a networking platform, not a broadcasting platform. Engage with your profile viewers. Think about where you want to take people after you've started the conversations, be it your scorecard, your quiz, a piece of value, in other words. Have a content plan. And if you're going to do it, do it on a consistent and regular basis. And remember, above all, people buy people. This is just another way of saying it. Mr. Godin here, he knows a thing or two about marketing. People do not buy goods and services. They buy relationships, stories, and magic. That's a nice little, little phrase to do it. Okay. Um, there's no sell today, but what I would love to point you to, if you're, if you're not already receiving the Life Talk Insider uh, newsletter, we send every single Friday at 2 p.m. We send the best bits of the Life Talk forum. Uh, if you're interested in my book, Lead Generation for Financial Advisors, that's on LinkedIn. And if you want to have a go at the Financial Advisor LinkedIn Health Check, um, feel free. I would imagine that one or two of you are feeling a little bit like this right now. Yes, I've thrown quite a lot at you. I'm really grateful uh, that you've stuck around today. Really appreciate it. Yes, I do one-to-ones as well. So if that's something of interest, uh, we can really get your LinkedIn profile singing, uh, then please do go for it. Um, let's just see. There's a couple of questions here. And I'm going to go backwards. Okay, Perry, what would the completion rate be on the scorecard in a paid marketing campaign? Depends where you are doing that marketing. Perry, I'll get back to you separately because that's a quite a long answer. Joseph's asked, what is the name of the automation app? Um, very fast is the one I use. So just type in very fast, all one word, and you'll find it in Google and you'll be led to a Google Chrome extension. Phil, where are you creating the quizzes on a separate website? Yes, it's a, there are multiple software tools now where you can create your own quizzes. You can do it. If you know your way around an Excel spreadsheet, you can create your own quiz. I will send a link to the one that I use um, with this particular one. There are, so there's multiple ones, but also if I can, I'll point you to a video which goes through all the different types of quiz softwares that there are. Uh, yes, you can plug it into your website, but it's actually better if it's set up as an individual website. Uh, thank you very much to someone who's got the same name as me. Thanks to somebody else. Uh, great. I think we're about there. Um, fabulous. So we're about done. Um, thank you very much to uh, to everybody for sticking around today. I will send you a copy of the video. Hope you found it useful. If you've got a question that you want to ask me uh, privately, just please do philip at philipcalvert.com and I'll be more than happy to get back to you. If you've enjoyed it, please do tell the world. Thanks very much. Nice to see you all today. Take care. Cheers, Phil.